So this is a paddle game, Breakout. There was also Super Breakout. Um, oh, ooh. look, you got to reset. I, I, I oh. fucked up already. You That's always my job, just bend it over and reset. It's like one person, when, when you're playing Atari with someone, there's always one, that one, one guy person gets to pl the, One guy yeah, gets yeah. to play and have fun, the other guy gets to bend over. The other person's the, re the reset bitch. <laughs> so, so, the object of the game, you just have to break away at this yeah. rainbow thing up here. Yeah, and, it's like uh, a pong type of thing. You're breaking the rainbow. As you, uh, as you break that rainbow, if you get the ball to the top part of it, the ball gets faster um, and it gets harder. The um, ball, again, it's a square, by the way. Yeah. <gasps> oh! You're not even getting close. I know, it's like because it never goes in the same place more than once. Imagine if your life, you, like, you didn't have any life at all, like, you didn't do anything, you just, yeah. you just like, sat around, you just, like, tried to fucking beat this all day. <laughs> That's all you did. But you were a fucking maniac because of it. Like, every day, all you did was play fucking Breakout, and, like, you, and then you started getting good at it. You know how, like, like somebody who plays basketball every day, they start getting good at it, they practice, you know, practice makes perfect. You're getting good at it. So... While you're talking, I don't even know how you're doing this. You fucking well, that's that's the thing about Atari games too. A lot of times, like if you just start like thinking about other things, sometimes you start doing really well. Sometimes because you just kind of like it just becomes natural, you know. Like if I sit here and I try really hard, I'll probably do badly. But just the fact that I'm barely paying attention right now and I'm talking, I think that's actually helping me. Because it's just like a natural. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh my fucking god. I got. I gotta keep talking though, or else I'm gonna start fucking. Oh up. my god! I oh my go. god! Um. So yeah, talk. Uh. Uh. Kellogg's uh, Rice Krispies. Oh. Uh, Kellogg's um, Rice Krispie treats. Oh, what was the thing with Golden Bear? Like Golden Grams? Oh. Um. Sugar cookie, Bear. Cookie, yeah. Sugar. What was the Sugar Bear fucking thing? Dooby 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 yeah. dooby dooby. Can't get enough of the Golden Grams. Dooby 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 now. <laughs> That's right. And I love how that's what you thought of to get to just get any kind of conversation going. Hey, let's talk about something. How about Sugar Bear? Dooby 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 doo wah. Scooby doo. Scooby doo wah. Sugar Bear. Oh, Scooby doo. Scooby Why does Fred wear the ascot, by the way? <laughs> what is an ascot? ascot? And why do they got to call it an ascot? By the way, see how the thing became sh smaller? How the fuck you are doing so good on this is fucking unbelievable. Okay, look at it. See, it's smaller. Scooby doo ba doo ba doo wah, and that's the end. Well, oh my I... god, look how far you got. Yeah, you want to try it one more time? No, okay. I don't. <laughs> this is combat. Combat? Combat. 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 The most common Atari game that there is. Common as dirt. Look at how many combat games I own. Just look at that. And uh, you think like, oh, I purposely go out and I collect combat games. I don't. <laughs> I just inherit them. I don't intend on it, but... Uh, that's your inheritance. <laughs> Combat games are like pennies. People just get rid of them. Anybody combat. who had this had combat. Combat. They had combat. It combat. Was, combat was the game that they had. It was combat. Fucking combat. Combat. Here you go. Now, listen to that beautiful sound. Check this out. Now, this is invisible combat. You know what this is like? These are like Klingon birds of prey because they can only ah, fire while cloaked or when they're uncloaked. Like they have to come uncloaked to fire. Exactly. <laughs> oh shit. Thought you were slick. I didn't know I was that close to you. <laughs> this is probably the best one. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh sh Oh, why do I come fucking visible? <laughs> I didn't do anything. I didn't hit my butt. I didn't shoot. Oh fuck. Oh shit. Oh no, that's not fair. Die, motherfucker! Oh, no, I shot it. you so hard you went to the other side of the earth. Oh, are we going to tie? 
Oh, oh if I would have had a point. split second, I could have fucking tied. <laughs> oh, this thing fucking sucks. Yeah, this like swastika shaped <laughs> plane. <laughs> yeah, but it's the thing is it's so big that it's like you you can't win with that fucking yeah. thing. Well, I don't, All I you're never... gonna do is get shot by me the whole. Oh, yeah, okay, but maybe. you got three planes, three targets. So I, right, I, I got three felt... bullets. You only have fucking one. Oh, you, that's true. You do have more bullets. Green plane versus the hot pink planes. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it looks like the dream phone. Yeah, it does actually. It, it does. It look. Watch this. When I tr when I fly up. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Here you go. Look, it's a dream phone. You know, hot pink was a cool color back then. Back in the eighties. In the eighties, hot pink was was awesome. Like my, everybody my liked that. My friend, that. who was a boy, had a hot pink bicycle. And, well, yeah, like, and it wasn't it was, like we were all like, oh, you know. Yeah, it was never. It was cool. Growing. It was like, wow, he's cool. It was. I, I remember uh, um, playing with chalk. We're like riding chalk on the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah. and each one of us had like our own color. And like, you were cool because you had hot pink. Well, everybody, like one of them was hot pink. I remember one of my friends going like, oh yeah, I want to be hot pink. I was like, oh, I wanted to be hot pink. <laughs> Hot pink was was awesome. It was the hot and shit. Here we have Yar's Revenge. Oop, upside down, Yar's Revenge. They're always upside down on Atari. Mm. It's confusing. When you put it in, it's like upside down. Can you tell me anything about Yar's Revenge? Oh, yes. Well, this is a Howard Scott Warshaw game, and this is considered one of the best Atari games, whereas E.T. is considered one of the worst. So he's had quite a uh, range. <laughs> Basically, what you're supposed to do here, you gotta kill this thing. That See, that weird area in the middle, that's mm -hmm. called the Cotile Zone, I believe it's called. And you know what that does? Mm -hmm. If you're in that zone, that means that that little dot that's coming after you, that yeah. could kill you, that can't hurt you when you're in there. That's like your oh, safe okay. zone, basically. Do you actually remember how to do this? Yes, you go up, you go up to uh, okay. that like face or whatever that is. Yeah. When you're able to get to it and you touch it. Oh, you touch that. And then that brings your gun okay. thing over on the left, and then you can shoot. Ah, uh, and then yeah. you line it up. You line it up. And then, but don't don't do it when it's the crawl. Though. Okay, when it's the crawl, it turns the or is it the glaive? Oh, the, the glaive. I always call it the crawl. The yar, which I guess I am the yar. Mm. The yar makes an appearance in the ET game, as right. well as uh, Riddles of the Lost Ark. I'm pretty sure, and even. Indiana Jones appears in the E.T. game. So he must have so, made this game first before he made those other ones. Yeah, but Yard's Revenge was first, but uh, but yeah, it was all about the Easter eggs. Ooh. You wanna try it? Okay. That little dot that comes after you, I find that funny. It, it's almost like Michael Myers. <laughs> that little dot. Because it's slowly coming after you. It's it's slowly, like... But what's funny is that it's just this little dash. Yeah. It's it's like a hyphen like coming after you. It's ridiculous. And what I really love is is Warshaw's explanation as to how he made that field in, in the middle. Yeah? Like, I'd have to, um, like, you'd have to watch Once Upon Atari or something to get the, uh, the actual technical explanation, but it has something to do with the coding of the game. Like, that is actually... The, the source code that uh, you're seeing on wow. the screen. Boom! Wow, that is so cool. It, it never gets... That's your reward for finishing the level. You get to see that. This is another game that I played the shit out of. Defender. Mm. I used to play this game a lot. So, for people that don't know, what you're supposed to do in this game is... There's people falling from the sky. Those little dots are... Like, 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 see that spaceship going down there? He's picking up a person. See that? He's, he's got a person. But what I gotta do, watch this. Here goes the person. Grab him. Oh, shit! Oh, see? See, that person's fucked now. Yeah, they're dead, but... You, you gotta can... catch the people. Yeah. I've always wondered what these little clusters are. Those, like... That's a piece of the, um, Corbomite ship from the Corbomite maneuver. Hmm. That's part of Baylock shit when it breaks off. Mm. That's what that is. This is Tranya. It's like fucking orange juice. <laughs> With a little whiskey in it. Is that really what it is? Or, I don't know. I'm making it up. I think it's like Tang or something. Oh! Tang. It's Tang. Remember Tang? No. How retro can we get? Now we're talking about Tang. Tang. You know, I have not heard the word Tang in, <laughs> geez, at least 20 years or something like that. Tang. <laughs> It's just a good word, isn't it? Hey guys, you want to drink some tang? 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 You want some tang? 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 Oh, I gotta get out. oh my god, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die! I'll save you, I got you, I got you! And are you supposed to take him somewhere? I don't know, like you could take him in the space. Uh, okay. Or you could take Why would you I, want I, to take a person into space? There's no Actually, oxygen in space. Yeah, you can kill him. I think you're supposed to put him down, uh, like okay. what you just did. 
Um, okay. But the thing about Defender is the game doesn't stop. Like, it, it seems well, like... Well, most Atari games don't stop, though. Yeah. You know what I like, but though? When you fire, like, your ship, like, disappears. So it's almost like you're firing your ship. I, I love that laser, too. It's just, like, one of those cool little, um... It's a great effect. Yeah. Yeah, this game's really cool, actually. It is. I like that devil. I, I, I know, I know. I always love that, too. It looks like a devil. Yeah, and there's there's Baylock coming after me. Tronya! <laughs> yeah! That's a Tronya! <laughs> That's why he's coming after you. He doesn't want to kill you. He just wants you to drink Tronya. Tronya. Come with me and drink Tronya! <gasps> Berserk. Okay, you, you know how I talked about how a lot of these games I played to death? Um, this is another one of them. I used to play Berserk so fucking much when I was three years old. Mm -hmm. Berserk kind of reminds me of Tron a bit, the way it looks and everything. It, yeah, in, it's in like... A way. Uh -huh. Oops, you just have these, um, you know, contrasting colors. It's just like beams of light. Cause, like, you know why? Because everything's black, and then you got like these, like, you know... It, neon blue or neon pink or something like that and yeah. that's kind of what Tron looks like and then you got these robot looking guys that are coming after you so I always think of Tron even though there is a Tron game for the Atari 2600 yeah. actually there's two there's Tron Adventure Adventures of Tron and then there's Tron Deadly Discs so mm -hmm. we'll get to those someday one thing you should know about Atari is that a lot of these games have different difficulties so even though this game is it's pretty simple. You just shoot robots and you go into the next room and, and it goes on and on and on. You just try to rack up a high score. But every time you hit the uh, game select switch, it'll do something different, like where the robots shoot faster. Mm -hmm. Or there's like there's a face called Evil Otto and this face comes after you and, and kills you. And I remember it was always a big deal to see Evil Otto. Like, when's the face going to come? When's the face going to come? And speaking of faces, every time you shoot one of these robots, you see that, like, face? Yeah. Like, when, you as you know, kill them, it's like a happy face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let me show you what happens if you hit the wall. Watch this. Wow. So you're getting electrocuted. Yep. I always thought that was such an awesome effect. Yeah. Here oh. he is, here he is. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's the Walmart logo. Yeah. Look, here comes the Walmart logo. Oh, shit. You know what this is? Wait, is this Dig Dug? This is Dig Dug. So... In this game, you're basically like you're a guy that goes underground. Obviously, I'm not sure exactly sure, but you're wearing this sort of like hazmat suit type of thing, and there's all these monsters that are, you know, in the ground. Yeah. And you have this big long hose, and you're trying to basically blow up all of the enemies with your hose with air. So you're inflating them and blowing them up. It's actually pretty violent. <laughs> But anyway, another cool thing about this is, watch this, if you, if you go like that, boom! You can kill the guys uh, yeah. with uh, the boulders. That's always cool. <laughs> and they're boulders, by the way. I know they look like squares, but... Because this was before circles were invented. <laughs> yeah. You know what's strange is how they turn into like these weird faces that can travel through the dirt. I always yeah. found that weird. Hmm. Yeah, imagine if you were like planting something in your garden or something and then some face comes out through the dirt yeah if, if you think about the, this game in terms of real life it's just so fucked up what's going on <laughs> first of all why does this guy want to kill these fucking things with this long hose like couldn't he just get a gun or like damn it just doesn't make any sense like what is what is this guy trying to do He's trying to inflate all these but why creatures and why does he care why doesn't he just go home and like drink iced tea or something <laughs> <laughs> like, why does he give a shit about doing this? The basics of Frogger are, you're a Frogger and you're, you're a Frogger. You're a Frog and you're trying to go across the street, but you're just trying to make it to the other side and fill up those spots. Uh, you see that little white frog that's on top of the logs over there? That's actually Frogger's girlfriend. Ah, uh, that's your mate. That's your mate, and it, you can you can fuck her on the log. <laughs> Did you just, you, you just fucked another frog? I just fucked another frog. Frogger. I'm a, I'm a frog fucker. There was actually played, a sequel uh, to this called on Atari 2600 called Frogger 2. Oh, 3D. I have it, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you remember playing Invisible Frogger? At uh, We went to a game convention, MAGFest, and there was a guy who had an arcade machine of Frogger that was rigged in a way so that the frog was invisible. So you know how hard the game is oh to play Oh my god. Right now? So you'd have to Imagine, remember where you are, basically. Yeah, wow. e exactly. Like, can you imagine playing... Frogger without being able to see the frog. Oh my god. 
it's it's hard. It I, like it's it's hard enough as it is. First of all, and I always played this game on easy mode, meaning usually when you play this game, you're not supposed to be able to do this, where you go through the oh, side of the screen. You can, yeah. Uh, you can actually turn the Atari so that you, when you hit the side of the screen, you die. But I always liked being able to go through the side. That's, I see, yeah. Uh, that, that's because that one on the right is really hard to get to. Then, because then if you go there and you're too far to the right, you're dead. Um, you can also jump on top of the alligator's back. Did you know that? Don't go in its mouth, but watch. Oh his, yeah. Boom, and you can like ride on top of him. Mm-hmm. That's a good trick. So I'm, I'm filling up the spots. But the best thing is, at least you get some frog pussy. All right, here we got Kaboom for the Atari 2600. Now, Paddle. It is a paddle game. And Kaboom is actually my number one most favorite Atari game of all time. And we'll get to James' soon. But this is my favorite, and I'm going to explain to you why. So, Kaboom. Up top, you have the Mad Bomber. And on the bottom, those things, believe it or not, those are buckets. Okay? And he's dropping bombs down. Now, what you're supposed to do... By the way, um, the Atari porn game, Beat em Medium, or the one with the witch shooting the milk out of her titties, that's actually like a, a remake, basically. Beat em and Edom is basically like... Kaboom. Yeah, they just took the skin off of... It's, it's Kaboom, and they just put different graphics with like pornographic images. So, the first couple rounds are very slow. Um, as you go, it gets faster and faster. Between each round, you have to hit the button, and that brings you to the next round. Like, watch. Boom, and... Now that's the next round, and it gets a little bit faster. Now there's eight rounds of uh, speed. It gets faster as it, as it goes, and, and the eighth level is the fastest that it can get. So you move back and forth, and what you want to do is, if you, uh, if, you drop, if you drop a bomb, you lose a bucket, okay? So, and if you, if you reach a thousand points, you get a bucket back. So what you want to do is try to purposely drop the bomb before you get to the thousand mark. That way, watch this, watch this right now. Okay, I'm, I'm right. I'm at about 940. That's right. That's right about before a thousand. So watch. See, so I got the bucket back, and that's the method to kaboom. You want to drop your bomb right before the thousand marks. So that's the method to play the game, but that's not what makes the game great. That's just the method on what you're supposed to do. What makes Kaboom great is that, well, it's very hard to explain because the reason that it, it, it is great is because it's so all-encompassing. You're thinking about nothing but the game. Thank you. I've told you this before. Maybe you can tell a story where I'm playing. <laughs> uh, as, as he's explained to me before, um, when you're playing Kaboom, the things start coming down so fast and you, you have to keep on top of it. You don't have any time uh, for your mind to even think about anything else. So you're just, like, you're completely immersed in the game. And you, you go into, like, like, like a hypnotic state almost. Like, almost like somebody else needs to turn the game off to get you out of it. It's like, it's like you're in, in zen. Like, you've gone into, like, some sort of zen state to be able to... Because if you think about this, what is the point of video games? Like, you live your real life, you go out to your job, you know, maybe you got a shitty job, whatever, you come home, and then what do you do? Maybe you put on a movie, watch a movie, to, to escape from the shitty day that you had, right? Or you play a video game. It's all about getting an escape. Well, I think Kaboom, and this is the reason why it's my favorite Atari game, it's the ultimate escape, because you have to, to, to do well in this at all, you have to completely 100% focus on the game and catching those bombs. It's an absolute focus, and when you're absolutely focusing on the game and nothing else, everything else in the world disappears, and all you can think about is catching those motherfucking bombs and, and you know, following following that string of bombs. So I think it's like the ultimate video game experience. And that that's why it's my favorite Atari 2600 game. And drop it. See, I did that on purpose. And then I keep going. Wait, why'd you do that on purpose? That one I fucked up. No, no, the, the first one I... I because, because it was right before I got to the thousand mark. It's, it's every thousand. It's like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Every time you get to 1,000, yeah. like right before you get there, if you get to like 
uh, 990 or whatever, you want to try to drop the bomb because you're going to get the bucket back right before then. And the thing is, is like, you know how it gets faster every time? Yeah. Well, if you drop the bomb, if you fuck up, basically, uh -huh. and you drop the bomb, it gets a little slower again. Uh, so you're just buying yourself a little speed. You're buying yourself speed time okay. is what you're doing. Because you don't want it to get to the eighth level. Because when it gets to the eighth level, it's going so fast that you can't stay alive very long. So there's eight speeds. So yeah, so you're trying to avoid that eighth speed. You're trying to keep it to like the sixth or seventh. That's what I'm trying to do by dropping those bombs on purpose. Mm. That's my method. It's all about getting the high score, but you have to, it's like strategy. You have to have a method and a strategy. And that's what's really cool about the best Atari games. There's other Atari games that are crappier where you just shoot stuff and it's not that great. But the better Atari games are really, you have to think about what mm. you're doing as you're playing them. It's like a test. Test to the shit. It's a test to the shit. I think my heart stopped. <laughs> Oh! Drop it! Oh! oh. Is right. it a speed eight? Now, now you're probably fucked, yeah, so watch out. Okay. There's nothing you can do. Actually, that's seven, I think. The next one, if you make it there. Whew. See, now it's gonna drop down, though, so you're not gonna make it. The speed eight. Whew. Oh, boy. <sighs> okay, that's kaboom. It's intense. Intense. Take me away from it. <laughs> You're gonna fucking have a heart attack. I'm. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna get like stuck playing. I'm like once. This you is play the last it, video we're ever gonna do because yeah, yeah. he's about to die. Because, you know, once you start playing a game like this, it's like you can't stop. Yeah, it is addicting. Yeah. It's like eating a Pringles. You gotta have more. Yeah.